to adore him today amen on this birthday or we say the birth of the savior on christmas day we just thank god amen for the opportunity to come to the house of worship on today on this christmas day um so we just uh just bless god on today for after all he did wake us up this morning and he started us on our yes, way yes. amen gave us activity of our limbs amen and blessed us to make it to the church safely or wherever our destinations may be and we just thank god for that can nobody else do it but our Lord and Savior Jesus yeah, Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. First giving on God had my life. Thank him for your salvation. Salvation because Jesus Christ is Savior. His name is Jesus, which yeah. means Savior. Uh, so we just thank God for our salvation on today. For those of us who accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord. I thank God for my wife, Tina, and amen, uh, the deacons. God bless you all. And Evangelist Slayer. Um, Mothers, uh, Mother Van and all the trustees and each and every one of you come out to the house of the Lord on today on this Christmas day. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the birth of the Savior, the birth of the Savior. We're going to be using or what I've used uh, using today would be uh, normally we would have a Sunday school lesson and or Bible study. And, um, and we're using our Union Gospel Press and it's entitled the birth of the Savior. And that's coming from Luke chapter number two, verses one through 17. Now, I'll use the text in which they have and, of course, the outline that they have. But we'll allow the Holy Spirit to fill in as he may as we go through this passage of Scripture. Once again, the birth of the Savior. Uh, and it's coming from the book of Luke, chapter number two, verses one through 17. And for those of you who may not, um, so you all, you have your Bibles, but you may not have the outline, I do have that printed out, uh, and it's uh, shown on, on the screen uh, behind me, so, and uh, before you, the birth of the Savior. And today it's going to be broken down to four parts of this lesson today. Uh, the journey, the birth, angels, and rumors. Everybody heard about rumors, right? Yeah, we'll get to that. But uh, I'm going to talk about the journey, the birth, angels, and Rumors. Once again, Luke chapter number two, verses one through 17. And we'll just go and break it down as as it comes before us. First of all, we're going to take a look in the um, chapter two, verses one through five, the journey. I'm going to take a read at that. And this is where here we're talking about the birth of the Savior. Once again, it says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this, this taxing was first made when Quirinius was, uh, Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Look at verse 5 to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Uh, we've learned in previous lessons uh, and in which the Bible tells us is that uh, there was a promise to David and that promise that his kingdom will last forever, uh, etern eternally. And of course, we know that that particular kingdom did not fall under the reign of Solomon, King Solomon, who was allowed to build the temple. But that, but which that promise was talking about was, of course, our Savior, our King, Jesus Christ. Well, now it comes to a time where this particular promise comes to fruition. Uh, here, there are things that came that that uh, that God had planned, and everything seemed to come together at a particular moment or a particular time. 
And here we see that this, there's a journey that's, that's happening right here. Joseph and Mary have to uh, go from Nazareth of Galilee to Judea unto the city of David called Bethlehem. You know, I had a question right here. Why? Why did they have to come all the way uh, from Galilee, uh, from Nazareth of uh, Galilee, all the way to Bethlehem? Well, we know the answer is right here in the word of God here. Once again, in verse number one, it says, and it came to pass in those days, in those days. He says also that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Now, that's someone that's in charge. Whenever we see these particular titles here, Caesar Augustus, uh, there was a decree or there was a summons. There was an order that was made to everyone that all the world should be taxed. Here we're looking at all the world. Did ten was Tennessee included in all that world? Well, you know, Tennessee was not part of this at that, at that particular time. There was no Tennessee. But we do know that all the world in which they were talking about was the world or the part or what a Caesar was in charge of. Not necessarily the whole wide world, because the only whole wide world is in, the only person in charge of that is, is God. But all the reign in which Caesar had was talking about that particular world or that expansion in which in which they had. Well, the purpose, once again, is that there was a decree. It had gone out uh, from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed or registered in which we don't call a census. Y'all remember when people came around knocking at your door and you, wouldn't, and you didn't want to answer it? And then they kept on knocking. It seemed like they wouldn't go away. And then they would speak through the door and say, I'm with the census bureau. I want to know how many people live in your house. What you know to your what? How much do you make? Do you have a job? How many kids are here? Come on, all in your business, as they say, in your Kool-Aid, and you just want them out. Well, this particular time, there was no getting out. Uh, they had to actually go down to where the taxes are to be registered or that census was to be, to be taken. He says in verse number two, and this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. They allowed us to be able to come as far as to put together a timeline here. You know, it's necessary sometimes whenever you're talking to history in order to, uh, in order to think about the history or the era, we need some timelines. In this particular time, they actually said during this time, or it actually gave us a name of a governor of Syria. So through, his story, through history and through all the research that's possible, they can actually put a timeline of when this possibly occurred. Uh, so therefore, all these other things are necessary. Sometimes we call that extraneous. Sometimes we call that not necessary. But others may say that was a very important part of something. Whenever we think something is so small and, and so uh, minute, but it's big on the other side. When you look back and see what you have been through, to see what, brought, what God has brought you through, you will see some small things at the time that you didn't think much of. But when you look back, you will see that was a very important part of your walk with the Lord or where he has brought you from. Other people may not remember, but you sure do. You see, it was small to them, but it was big to you. But here, it was actually said that now, he says there was a taxing or there was a registration uh, that at first went out to, uh, by uh, Serenius or Quirinius uh, was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own uh, city. So therefore, they had to take a journey. Uh, so this particular time and, and this particular place, everything, once again, had to come to a particular end. Verse 4 says, and Joseph also went up, he says, from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city, listen to this, y'all, of David, which is called uh, Bethlehem. And then it has in parentheses in my Bible, it says this right here, because it wanted to make something very clear to us. But they don't want us to run over it. They want us to pause for a minute and take a look and have a reason of why this particular place. He says this, it says right here, because, and you know how it starts off when you say because. When you ask someone a question, they say because, especially when they think that, that uh, someone, uh, you know, they have to give an answer. They say because. Why? Because. But look, because he was of, talking about he, talking about uh, Joseph, was of the house uh, and uh, lineage of, or the family 
and lineage of David. What are you talking about, David? There are a lot of Davids around. But here we're talking about the David. We're talking about King David. Everybody know King David. You know, King David, y'all remember him? He was the one with the slingshot. He's the one that killed that, uh, that what was that? Yeah. A giant. Yes, sir, thank you. He's the one that killed a giant with that slingshot. It's, it was a little small fella there. But he killed this great big giant. So we learn about David and, and King David as he comes along. And, and we also found out that King David was not perfect. We found out that King David did a whole lot of, whole lot of mess in his life. But, but we found out that he loved God, that he had a heart of God. And, and we found out that even David himself, amen, how God has, uh, just loved him. And, and God has set him up and set him aside for a time such as this. Because David was the one to be used. And not the other king that the people wanted. But David was a king that God had called. Mm -hmm. So yes. So though and because Joseph was of the house and the lineage of David. He was to go to the city of David which is called Bethlehem. The purpose once again in verse 5 says to be taxed or registered as we already explained with Mary. And uh, in, in previous study we've learned that Mary was as it says right here his espoused uh, wife, uh, being great with child, but she was betrothed to him. He was older, she was younger. But now, at this particular time, she's pregnant. In our studies, we found out that she's pregnant not by another man, but by, but by whom? By the Holy Spirit. God said, look, God said the Holy Spirit will overcome you. He said that she will be with child. And then, and then uh, uh, her, her, her espoused husband, let's just say, uh, Joseph said, look, look, you done went out and you done, you done messed around on me. I'm going to just put you away. But, but uh, he had to think of those things before he did because he was an upright man, a just man. And God spoke to him in a dream, sent an angel to speak with him uh, in a, uh, regarding that. Let him know that this thing that she has is a son of God, a man that uh, is from God and not from another man. And he was able to receive that. And so then he went on and, and accepted that, accepted her. And now Joseph was, was tagged and Joseph was part of being uh, the nurturer or the, or the father, the earthly father of Jesus, the son of God. So that's how Joseph comes in the picture because Joseph himself was of the lineage, as it says right here, of King David. You know, Jesus had to be in that lineage. And therefore, Joseph comes in to play that role. God uses the people and uses whom he wants. But because of all of that, a journey had to be made. And along with that journey, she was pregnant. It says, great with child, meaning she was far along. Well, the Bible lets us know that how everything comes together, he uses people. Not only does he always use saved folk, because some, sometimes us saved folk don't want to be obedient. Y'all know that? So he uses whom he will. He uses, he uses kings. He uses whomever he will, whether they're well, for him or against him. Because God himself is in control. At this particular time, God, amen, allowed things to happen. And at this particular time, a registration or this taxing was during this particular time. How everything came together. Well, they, uh, Joseph, as we see, brought Mary with him. The Bible lets us know, or it, uh, it, through all the, the research, through all the studies and everything, and commentators, lets us know that they traveled approximately 80 miles south to Bethlehem. Can you imagine a young lady traveling that far? As the Bible said that she was far along, or she was great with child. Uh, and so that was a very, very hard journey, no doubt. However long it took, the, 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 the key is... They made it. Don't you know sometimes there are obstacles and stumbling blocks in our way, on our way to where God has us? Yeah. But the important thing for us is to make it. Don't give up. Amen. The travels might be hard, but continue on. God has your hand and he will not let go. And, it, and the answer is that is the, the thing for us is to not let go of his hands. Proverbs 21 and 1 says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. 
and um, whithersoever he will. So therefore, regardless, amen, who God want to use, he can use them. And he'll use them for his, his glory. Uh, next outline, next part of this, we have the birth. And the birth is coming from verses 6 and 7 of our passage of Scripture today. It says in verse number 6, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished. Or another word would be completed, uh, that she should be delivered. Verse 7 says, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Here we see that Mary was ready to have that baby. She was ready, Mary's little baby. She was ready to give birth. They made it all the way there. And the Bible lets us know that so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished or completed that she should be delivered. Y'all see where it says, and she brought forth her first born son. What is that telling us? That means that Mary, Jesus' mother, had more sons. Uh -huh. And she had some daughters. Yes. So Jesus had a very big family. So he wasn't by himself in a family. He was the oldest, but he had a big family. It goes on and says, and says uh, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Normally we jump right back to, right to the very ending of that, that there was no room in the end. But we want to take a look at a few things here. First of all, Mary was ready to have that baby. The Bible lets us know, and we even was read in our devotion on this morning, in Galatians 4 and 4 and 5, it says, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Amen. Isn't that good news? God knows exactly when he wants things done. It's not on our timeline. We may think it is, but everything is on God's timeline. Uh, it doesn't matter, amen, how we, how we say that God is right on time. Amen. Uh, it's not like a stop clock. It's not like he had, if he, went, if he was a minute later, things would be too late. Amen. It's right when God would have it. Amen. And that's when whatever it is, is destined for that particular, that particular time. Also, John 1 and 14 says, and the word was made flesh. Uh, it says right here, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and grace. And truth. That's Jesus. Jesus was born. He was a little baby. He wasn't a, he, at the time. You know how it is at the one song. Mary had a little lamb, and his, his feet was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. I don't know the rest. If there was any rest, but. He, but Mary, yeah, yeah, Mary's baby, Jesus. He was actually born. He was a baby. He had to be fed. He had to, he had to be taken care of. He couldn't do it on himself. Was he God? Yes, he's God. But he needed the assistance of the earth, whom he deemed as the mother, as Mary. Mary had to do her part. Mothers, you got to do your part. The baby can't do it by themselves. I don't know how old they're gonna be, they're gonna be until they can do things by themselves. Maybe around what? Thirty? Uh, uh, so we bring it down. I think over time the age have kept on going up a little bit. But the thing is, is that they can't do it by themselves. We gotta nurture them up into a particular point where they can be, Amen. Where the wings can spread and they can go on by themselves. Uh, there was one song, I believe it was, where it says that the eagle, amen, the eagle that stirs the nest. Y'all remember that one? Where, where at, at, at a certain time, you know, those things had to keep on sticking up the, 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 the little eaglet or something. Or I don't know, I forgot how it was, but at some point, that little, that little fella had to get out on his own. He had to go and get his own food. He had to fly on his own and do what was necessary. So at a time, God says it's time for us to get up out of that seat, amen, and do his bid, his bid, and his work. 
Amen. And they said, I have trained you enough. I've nurtured you enough. But I'm always with you. Mothers, are you always with your children? I don't know why I ain't asking the daddies. <laughs> but, but yeah, 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 you, you see, they're always with them, regardless of how, how old, amen, they get. But yeah, there was a birth. Mary had the baby. It was at the right time, the time in which God, amen, had already set aside for him. And the, and the Bible continues to say right there in verse number seven, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. The Bible, or it said, and once again, in the, the descriptions and everything, and, some, and thank God for our commentaries, because a lot of us, when we start using our own commentary, we'd be way out there. But here is this right here, wrapping, this swaddling, was used to ensure that the limbs would grow straight in or keep him is secure. I think that's what it had, is that uh, used to keep him secure and also ensure that the limbs would grow straight. Interesting. They're going to run the ortho, whatever, out of business if uh, the babies, <laughs> the mothers and everything did that. So it lets us know that, look, the mothers knew what to do with their children. Yeah, whether it was uh, uh, tradition or whatever it was, they were taught. The young, the young girls or the ladies were taught what to do with their children. The mothers were doing a great job in teaching their girls as they grew up. And also he goes on and says right here in verse number seven, not only was he wrapped in swaddling clothes, but also says that and laid him in a manger. Another word for manger is feeding trough. Y'all catch that? A feeding trough. A feeding trough means just what it means. It means that the inn where they were, because there was no room in the inn, that means that they were in a feeding trough or area where animals were, and animals had to eat out of the trough. You see? So those of us that don't really quite get it or understand it, we've seen cowboy movies, uh, and uh, we've seen what the, where the animals eat out of this thing because the people come and put stuff in, and, and then so a feeding trough. So I'm quite sure they fixed it up a little bit. They already had them wrapped in swaddling cloths or these cloths and everything and laid him in a manger. I want to make a point here. He wasn't thrown in. He wasn't left unattended. He was laid in the manger with care, with love, with concern, with affection, because that's Jesus. Now that we have Jesus, how are we treating him? Are we treating him with the same respect that, that Mary treated her baby? Oh, oh, oh he, he's not a baby no more. But at the time, he was treated as such because he needed to be nurtured, teaching us how to treat our, our children because we never know what God or who God had destined them to be. It says, right here, it says that swatting clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I know it said that it was said that they went back to their, their hometown or the town of the family's lineage. Didn't they have some relatives there? They didn't have no hotel, motel, no holiday inn. They didn't have uh, any of that stuff. But they found a place. And that place was on the outskirts of a house or part of a house. Wherever it was, it was where the animals were. But you know what? Joseph and Mary, they weren't too proud. They went where they could go. The important thing was for them to take care of their child. They were, they, they, they were, they were already met by the angels that that child would come. And who that child was. So they knew they had to take care of that child no matter what it took. They would guard that child with their lives because they knew that child's destiny. And it was up to them to raise him to, uh, up to a certain particular certain point because he could not do it himself. So there are things that we are supposed to do. But can't God do it? Yeah. But why is he going to do it when we can do it while wow, we can do it. So don't shirk our responsibility. I'm going to get to that in, in a minute. 
So yes, it was important for, for all this to happen at a particular time. Even though the baby was laid inside of a manger, inside of where animal troughs were, they understood and now we understand that even what Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We're talking about Jesus. So yes, we looked at the journey. We looked at the birth. Now let's take a look at the angels. We're going to look at verses number 8 through 14. It says this right here. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace, goodwill toward men. I have each and every one of us to know it's important that they did not have a room in the inn. It's important that they did not have the luxuries that others that went to town, even though it was full, that went to town may have had. So sometimes when we call it our bad luck, sometimes it might just be what we need at that particular time. Amen. Here we know that they were right there inside, amen, this particular place, amen, for a particular reason. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. But let us go on right here in verse number eight. Verse number eight is talking about the shepherds here. He says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. Anybody know what abiding mean? I know a lot of times we say it means to remain, to stay. That's where they are. But I would like to also say that this abiding not only means that's where they are in a sense of location, but they were also at action. They were also in action. They were also doing what they were supposed to do. It says that there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, meaning that it was their shift. If it was a 24-hour or if it was an 8-hour, if it was a 4-hour, whatever it was, they were doing their work. It's important to do our work. We uh, need to make sure that I got on here say it's important to be about the business and not a slacker. Anybody know what a slacker is? Lazy. That said lazy. <laughs> be about our work. Because you know who's watching? God is watching. What we do, we do as unto God and not unto men. Because God is watching. So yes, these shepherds were doing what shepherds do. They were keeping watch over their flock. And it says that as far as the timing, it says by night. And then verse number nine says, here we have the angel visitation. He says right here uh, in regards to the angel visitation. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. They were sore afraid. Angel, angel, angel. Now, me and we ain't talking about no woman. Angel appeared. Here we're talking about the angel of the Lord. What is an angel? In Hebrews 1 and 14, it says, Are they not all ministers, ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? We are all heirs of salvation if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Meaning that you have ministering angel serving at the very words or command of God. Wow. 
But I thought I had enough when I had the Holy Spirit, when I have the Holy Spirit within me. But just imagine who you are to Christ. He keeps us. So yes, the Holy Spirit directs, guides, teaches, and does everything. But God has a ministering spirit for each and every one of us. Not only that, but also this angel. He said, you heard of Michael, haven't you? Not your friend or cousin like that. Michael the angel. Then there's Gabriel. Y'all heard of him? How about Lucifer? Well, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> he, 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 see, he was an angel, but he a demon now, you see. He, uh, demon of Satan. Cherubim, seraphim, angels. These who God has made. God created them. And, and those angels are for him, to, for them to do what he would have them to do. The angels. That's what they are for, but these angels came and they came and visited these shepherds. It says, came about them, came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. What do you mean the glory? Talked about the light. Where did the light come from? The angels have light. That light came from God. You see, the light in which now look, 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 look. I want, I want us to catch this right here. Not only does that angel, that angel have that glory of that light. Each and every one of us who accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, don't you know you have the glory? The Bible lets us know that you are lights in this dark world. Why? Because Jesus, Father of lights, you are children of lights. Amen. We are to give light, amen, wherever we go because of Jesus Christ. So it's important to us to see that this angel here, that this angel, the angel came in to communicate to them. Now they were afraid because of the fact that it's something that they have never seen before. People who are always on the outside, even at nighttime. This is something that's totally, totally different. Verse 10 says, and the angel said unto them, this is the message of good tidings of great joy. Then the angel said unto them, he says that, uh, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. This is good tidings. Also want to share with us, and quickly I'm going to just share it right fast, is that, a shepherd at that particular time, amen, was of a lesser class. But can somebody say, thank God for Jesus? Amen. amen. Because, amen, in the book of John, chapter number 10, amen, verse number 11, it says this right here. It says, for John 10 and 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Uh, so therefore, the shepherd, yes, they may have looked down upon shepherds, but God has a way of lifting people up. Amen. Amen. When you feel like you are down or you feel like, amen, everybody else is before you and, and you feel like that, that nobody cares or thinks about you, remember and think again that God knows you. God is the one who lifts you up. Don't wait around for people to lift you up. You'll be waiting a long time sometimes. But allow God, amen, to lift you up, to exalt you. Amen. amen. Because man, what we'll do, we'll let you down. Amen. I'm going to let you know that right now. We will let you down. Amen. Because of who we are. Yes. So yes. But there is a message right here in verse number 10. It says, the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The angel is saying, I am delivering a message to you from God. I can't do anything else other than what God would have me to do. Mm -hmm. It's to deliver this message. And it's up to you to do what you're supposed to do with it. He says it right there. He said, it goes on, he says, in verse number 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David. He's giving them some exacts. He's not letting them just wander off somewhere. He's giving them exacts. The city of David, a savior which is Christ the Lord. He's saying, look, I bring a, a savior, a savior, the one being, look, I was reading in, in that commentary that Sunday school, it, it was interesting because is this what it said about, about, about a person that needs to be saved? It was interesting, it says, the one being saved has no resources of his own to escape the situation. Y'all catch that? The one that needs to be saved has no, amen, no resources 
regarding of his own to escape the situation in which he's in. So therefore, he needs to be saved. We were in that situation. We are that situation. We can't save ourselves. We don't have the resources to save ourselves. We need a savior. Sometimes we, you know, yeah. We all need a savior. Everybody needs a savior or basically to be saved, right? But look, we all need the savior. Y'all catch that? So there's a difference between a uh and the. You see, Jesus is the Savior. So we all need the Savior. Amen. Uh, so, so yes, you tell them that the, the angel came and said, born unto you this state of city, in the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign. He's telling them that there's going to be a sign. This is a sign of you. This is a sign. This is a sign. Pay attention. Make sure you write that down. This is the sign he's saying. Now, the angel, I mean, the, the, the shepherds are going to remember this. They're they ain't got no pen and paper, nothing. They ain't got no phone to record or nothing. They, they're just taking it all in, even though they're in a state of shock right now. But ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Lying in a manger. Okay, they got that. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, Goodwill toward men. You're giving them a sign. You're giving them a sign. Not only did we give them a sign, but he also said that there's a savior. Someone who can save you. Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, the Lord, Master. Uh, the sign. The sign was swaddling clothes. During that particular time, all the babies probably, or majority of the babies probably did have swaddling clothes. After all, so was that the sign? I would like to have you to know that was not the sign. This sign, this sign, I'm going to read it again. It says, you shall find a babe wrapped. This is the sign. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. And here's the other one, comma, lying in a manger. So you can almost see the shepherds say, man, going into town. In Bethlehem, looking into every place where there is a manger at, looking for that sign. But maybe they came to one and they saw a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, but they turned and kept on running. Why? Because that babe wasn't laying in a manger. And they kept on until they stopped and looked and saw a babe lying in the manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. The Bible lets us know, it says that uh, they... After that message was given, amen, the uh, heavenly host came and began to sing, amen, uh, to begin to sing praises to God. Uh, and then they, the, what they sung was glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. I guess that's a song, but if we can't sing it, the angels sure can. It says it right there, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. They evidently, angels don't have a lot of stanzas, do they, like we do. They put it right where it is. And they, and, they, and they set it as it is. Amen. And so goes on and says that uh, in verse number uh, 12, and they're talking about the sign, swallowing clothes and most babies wrapped in them. This is not the sign. The sign is not only being wrapped, but also that they are in the manger. Let us drop down to verse number, uh, verse number 15 or our next one. He talked about here the birth of the Savior and regarding rumors. Uh, for regarding rumors. Okay, he goes on to verse number 15, he says, And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to, to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste. He says, Came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they, they, they made known, uh, known abroad, the same which was told them concerning this child. Y'all see that? They said, now that we got the message, now that we got the message, what are you going to do with the message? Now they're going to go and do, amen, what they're told. You'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger in Bethlehem. And then they had somebody else say, hold my staff. And somebody had to go, somebody had to watch that sheep and everything by night. So somebody had to stay back. Don't you know somebody got to stay back? 
Hey, man, somebody got to tell the story. Yeah, they took off that way. Yeah, they went to go find their babe, their son, and they did find them evidently. They said, let's go and see, verse number 15. And then 16, it says that they came with haste. Mean they did not waste time. Once the angels left, once the host left, they said, it's time. Let's waste no more time. Let's go right now. Another one said, but I ain't ate nothing yet. The other one said, but it's too late now. You ain't got time to be eating that. Drop what you got. Let's go. Amen. Amen. Let's go and find a savior. It's important to find a savior. I don't care what you're going through right now. Amen. Right now, whatever it is. Amen. He is right there to save you. Whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You ain't got to say, I, I got to do this first or I got to do that first. You know how it is when we, when we uh, get saved and we start learning about tithing and offering and stuff like that. And, and we say, whoa, you know, I ain't got enough money to pay no tithe. Y'all catch that? Pay tithe. You know what I mean? I ain't got enough money to do that because I've got some bills to pay. You know what I mean? I got to pay ML. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. GNW. You know, I got I to gotta do this and I got to do that and all this got to do's. But we didn't say anything about what we got to do for God. The one who saved us. The one who rescued us from the pit of hell. The one who gave us eternal life. The one who wrote our names in the Lamb's book of life. But yet we say he had put, he put him on a back burner. After I write all my bills and write the checks to all my bills, I would see what I got left to give him. Uh, amen. And so, what, so what we say and what we teach is tithing is only a beginning. If you can't do for God, just imagine what you think he can't do for you. Amen. amen. That's right. That's right. So, so what happens is that as we continue to grow and we, we can struggle with this sometimes, is that, and somebody in the family, the wife or the husband, steps up and say, I tell you what, let's do what the Bible says. Let's give to him off the top. After all, you ain't getting the stuff off the top. The government is already getting it off the top before you even get yours. Don't you ever say net at the bottom? Yeah, net means you're catching everything else. Uh, that, you see, and that's what happens. So therefore, now let's, let, let, let's do what the Bible says. Let's do it off the top. So do it off the top. And as we say, lo and behold, guess what? Wow, I got something left. How did that happen? My math on this calculator did not work. God did something miraculous. That was just a small miracle, y'all. He said, if you think that's something, you keep on sticking with me. You keep on walking with me. You keep on listening to me. You keep on studying my word. You keep on being with me. You keep on, keep on, keep on. He said, I bless you beyond measure. He will, he will, he will. He does. He has done it. So, go on. I ain't getting no tithe and offering. Y'all ain't got it. I done nothing left. Oh, we, we still at the birthday right now, right? Okay, look, 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 look. look. So, go on and say, look. Uh, they came with haste. They did not waste time. They said, look, let's go right now. So we can find Mary, Joseph, or they didn't even make mention of them, did they? The angel just told him about a babe. <laughs> so it lets us know who's important here. Jesus. Jesus, the babe, is important here. So it lets us know in our, in all of our talk, all our testimony, all our everything else that we want to talk and discuss, the important thing is Jesus. Amen. Of all the blessings, all what he's done, all what he's done, all that, Jesus is, is the key, is the essential matter. In our discussion. So when we talk to somebody. Jesus is the one. Without him. We are nothing. So he goes on. And, and let us know that yes. They came and they did find. The babe lying in the manger. Because that was a sign. They found it. And now they now introduce themselves. Or to Mary and, and Joseph. Find out who they are. And then of course. In our settings that we do. We line up everything else and, and put, to put it all together. And so we're worshiping Jesus at the manger. So then the Bible lets us know in verse 17, it says that when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same, which is told them concerning this child. Here they call it a rumor. So they came, 
they saw, and they told him. They came, they saw, and they told him. So they ran on. They ran on. Church, I believe I'm going to run on. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to run with me? Just to see what the end going to bring. This to me is no more a rumor. To me, and it should be for you. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Jesus, Savior, Emmanuel. God with us. Christ, the anointed one. Lord, my master, my king, my everything, my righteousness, my, my, my. Who is Jesus to you? Yes, this is his birthday. But we also know this is Christmas. And people are super busy. Cash registers have been ringing. And this is out of the book. But where people should go overboard is not in gifting, but rather in what? Glorifying God. I have a question here. How would you glorify God today on his Christmas birthday? Closing thoughts is what's important? Important thing is that it's the good tidings that we got out of this lesson. The good tidings or the good news. And we know how we label the good news. It's the, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. But the angel said he got good tidings. And that good tidings was the birth. Good tidings is good news. So I have to include in the good news is that Without the birth, there can't be a death. So the good news encompasses Jesus, his whole life. Just like your birth is important. What's most important is your second birth. Y'all catch that? Because we all got to be what? Born again. So the good news or the good tidings, not necessarily today, he was born the day he was born, but that he was born and that of a virgin Mary. So important aspects of the lesson here. Thirdly, that he fulfilled the mission. He became our sacrificial lamb. He died for our sins. His blood was shared for you and for me. So number one was that, that he was born. Number two is that he was born by a virgin Mary. Number three, that he died for our sins. Number four, that he was buried. And, the, and in the end, like, look, 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 he was buried in the third day, raised with all power in his hands. What good is the death if there is no resurrection? And fifthly, he will come back one day to receive a church without spot or wrinkle. So don't you want to be in that number? Amen. And the only way that we can be in that number is that we accept this day, this Christmas day, yes. Jesus, born of a virgin Mary, yes. the son of God, yes. gave his life for you and for me. Yeah. He shed his blood on the cross. Yeah. They hung him high. Yeah. Spread him wide. Yeah. He hung his head. And then he died. And then they buried him in a borrowed tomb. Because he wasn't going to stay there forever and a day. Yeah. The Bible said that after three days he got up. And when he got up, he got up with all power in his hands. Yeah. Isn't that good news? That's good news. The Bible lets us know he's going to come back. He's going to come back. And the key mention here is that, look, just in case we go to him first, we got to be ready. And the only way we're ready is to accept that baby 
who is now a grown man who died for your sins, raised the third day, and sitting on the right hand side of the Father, accept him as your Savior. So accept him as your Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. To accept him as your master. And he will reside, he will abide, he will strengthen, he will keep, he will bring things back to your remembrance. He will do all of that just for you by way of the Holy Ghost who will be inside of you when you accept him as your Savior. We just got to know who he is and who he is to you individually. We went over the journey. We went over the birth. We went over angels. We went over rumors. Rumors. And rumors will always be with us. Our job is to turn rumors. If there's, if there's a truth, make it the truth. If it's a lie, set it as a lie. We want to tell the truth. Because Jesus is the truth. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you for the opportunity to share your word on this Christmas day. The birth of the Savior. Thank you, God, for, for who you are and, and for all that you have done for us. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you that your word abides inside of us, whether we read it, whether we hear it, it abides. And because the word abides, the word starts working in us and on us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing your work, for keeping us. Thank you for bringing to our remembrance all that God has done in our lives how he saved us from car wrecks, from death, from everything that we could possibly think of. Because if we just think back, we can see where his hand was in it and he saved us. Amen. Those of us who ain't saved, when we look back and see that he saved us that way, we now know that he is a savior and he is the savior. And that's what we need is the savior of the whole wide world. God says that he gave his only begotten son. If only whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If we only believe. If we believe. So God we thank you. We bless your name. We magnify you. We thank you for this day. A day that you have made. And because you allowed us to be in it and be part of it, we're going to rejoice. And we are so glad. God, we thank you. We bless your name and give you all praise and all glory. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. 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 God bless.